appreciate that. So uh, welcome everybody. I hope everybody's well and uh, appreciate you joining. This is my first uh, webinar, so uh, appreciate your, your patience. I did wait until there was a global pandemic so we could get a greater audience and I guess uh, that time is now. So hopefully we don't have to have another one for me to do a webinar, but uh, appreciate you guys joining. So, <clears throat> see here. So we already uh, talked about my background a little bit, uh, was an engineer for quite a while, and then I've transitioned over to patent law. And when I started out, I was an engineer at uh, Hughes Space and Com, doing some electronics work, international rectifier, doing some semiconductor MOSFET work, and then pulse electronics, doing some electronics components. And we were just talking about some surface mount work there. Throughout that transition, I went from having almost no knowledge of patents to uh, managing outside pa patent council when I was at Pulse Electronics and then to full-time patent law in 2012. And this is basically a summary of the most useful things I wish I knew when I was doing engineering. I never had any IP training at these companies. Although they're fairly large, there was very minimal uh, training that involved intellectual property, how to deal with it, how to review patents, should we be reviewing patents. However, when I got into intellectual property, I found that engineering is what the, the patent litigators call the treasure trove. So during uh, patent litigation, this is where they go. They go to the engineering emails, they go to the engineering notebooks to, to, to lead the case. And unfortunately, I found out that engineers are not very, uh, it's not they're not very well trained in this, although this is where most of the discovery happens. And personally, I'm still praying no one litigates the matters I worked on when I was in engineering because I know now that I did a lot of things improperly uh, from a litigation standpoint. And it's my goal to help educate others as to what you should and what you shouldn't do. And I think as engineers, we all want to do the best for our company. But if we don't have the knowledge and we don't have the training, then then you can't do it. And that's pretty much the goal of, of this presentation is to give you the essential information to help you effectively use and work with patents, not to overcomplicate it, but basically to say, hey, here's, here's what you need to know, here's what you need to watch out for and uh, protect yourself and the company. Now you may say, well, patent litigation doesn't really happen. It's only in a few percent of the cases. And that, that's true. Litigation only happens in a few percentage of the cases. But assertions of litigation where someone sends you a cease and desist letter or something like that happens quite a bit more frequently. And litigation does happen. Uh, I was in engineering for about 18 years and I was involved in, I was working at Pulse Electronics and fortunately before it was before my time, but uh, there was a lawsuit versus uh, with Halo about uh, Pulse infringing on some patents. And when I came in, I had to, my engineering team had to support that case. This case actually was one of the seminal cases that went to the Supreme Court. And it took a lot of engineering time. My engineers were being deposed. It took a lot of money. It took a lot of focus away from uh, real engineering work and, and building the products that made the company money. So hopefully some things in here you learn can help to prevent that from happening at your company. And it's important to remember that litigation does happen. <laughs> it can happen at your company. So starting out, I'll give you a brief review of intellectual property and bring everybody up to speed on intellectual property. There's a few introductory slides and then we'll get into kind of the, what I believe is the four main things engineers should know about intellectual property. So you can take a look at this slide. This covers the four main types of intellectual property that have intellectual property protection. So you can take uh, all your research and development, your products, product brands, all this sort of information, and you can break it down into four different categories of protection. Uh, patents, of course, we'll be talking about in this presentation. There's copyrights, which you're per familiar with. It's protection of creative works. This usually covers literature, but now uh, covers software. Trademarks cover recognizable sign, design, or expression. You can think of it as the Coca-Cola uh, trademark. Uh, sign and then trade secrets are is information generally not known generally not known to the public but confers an economic benefit on the holder you can think of this as the coca-cola formula 